Okay, let's take a look at um, charging a system that uses a TXV for its metering device. We will look at this same R22 system we have in the previous videos, but I want you to know that the even if you are looking at an R410A system, the the principles all remain the same. So when you're charging an TXV metered system, you're going to hook your gauges up in the same manner and your temperature probe, instead of being put on the suction line, will be connected to the liquid line so that you can measure the temperature of the refrigerant as it exits the condensing unit. Here's a point that I just want to drive home again, and that is when you are measuring and charging a system and you have your temperature probe on the liquid line and you have your gauges hooked up to the service port and they're just several inches away from each other it gets it's confusing when you're a new technician to, to understand the concept that when you have your gauges hooked up at the service port instead of measuring what's happening right here which is in very close proximity to what you're measuring right here your gauges are actually measuring what's happening in the center of the condensing coil and the temperature probe is measuring what's happening right here so don't be looking at this and thinking that because these are so close to each other that you're measuring everything that's happening in these in the course of several inches so the temperature probe is measuring the temperature of the refrigerant at this point but your pressure gauges are measuring the pressure and temperature of the refrigerant and state of that refrigerant in the center of the condensing coil. So with a TXV meter device in your um, system, you cannot use the superheat method for charging. That's because a TXV has a sensing bulb that's mounted on the evaporator coil and it maintains a constant superheat over a wide range of operating conditions and this these wide range of operating conditions includes an overcharged or an undercharged system so there's no good to try and charge a TXV metered system using superheat. Let's take a quick review of um, what happens with a properly charged system with a TXV metering device with our 95 degree outdoor air, 75 degree indoor air, and 10 degrees of subcooling. So quickly we have a our superheated vapor enters the compressor. The compressor increases the pressure of this superheated vapor and that in turn increases the temperature. It's still 100% vapor, it is still superheated, and it exits the compressor and enters the condensing coil. The first part of the condensing coil is designed to desuperheat the uh, vapor that has exited the compressor, and it gets rid of that uh, superheat that was added to the refrigerant in the evaporator it it desuperheats and it starts to shed that heat out into the outdoor air because we're at a much higher temperature outdoor air is 95 so we're we're getting rid of this heat rather quickly and at a certain point designed by the engineers the vapor the refrigerant vapor is completely desuperheated and it reaches its saturation point and from this point on in the condensing unit it's still shedding heat it's still warmer than the outdoor air but it is changing state from vapor to liquid and remember whenever something changes state it either absorbs or releases a, tre a tremendous amount of heat energy so as it goes through this condensing unit it is changing state from vapor to liquid shedding off all that heat that it picked up over here in this part of the evaporator coil and at a certain point in the condensing 
coil near the end of the condensing coil it's now the refrigerant has now changed completely 100 to 100 percent liquid and it's no longer at its saturation point so from this point on it's 100 percent liquid and it's still warmer than the outdoor air so it continues to shed its heat and the temperature drops on this refrigerant although it doesn't change state anymore and it's it is now shedding sensible heat and this solid this is a solid column of liquid that comes up here to the TXV metering device and because a metering device is a restriction this refrigerant backs up here like a traffic jam just a bit and it's designed so that it is backed up at the tail end of this condensing coil and it and it spends a little bit of more time down here picking up some subcooling as it travels up to the metering device now it's important to have subcooling because if we're just very close to the sat saturation point with a, just a degree of subcooling any change in um, any added heat or any drop in pressure is going to start flashing this refrigerant over into gas before it hits the metering device so you want to have a good amount of subcooling so this this little traffic jam right here so to speak of this liquid refrigerant this little backup here allows it to pick up its 10 degrees of subcooling before it hits the metering device and that's how it was designed to do so so what happens when you have a low refrigerant charge well there's not as much refrigerant in this system so the refrigerant doesn't back up until it hits this point and instead of shedding this five degrees of sensible heat between here and here it can only um, it only has enough time to get rid of five degrees of subcooling or five, five degrees of heat because it's not backed up in this condensing coil as far as it should be to get rid of the 10 degrees that it needs to so once again if we if it sheds 10 degrees between here and here because it's backed up and we have less refrigerant that backup point doesn't happen until here and then that decreases our amount of time that the refrigerant spends in the condensing coil and it decreases the subcooling level of the refrigerant so you've hooked up your gauges you find out you have five degrees of subcooling when you should have 10 you know that your refrigerant isn't backed up in the condensing coil like it should to shed that extra five degrees so you're going to begin adding refrigerant to the system you do this incrementally so you add a little bit of refrigerant and it will back up it the refrigerant to for example this point here with a TXV system especially you need to add refrigerant and wait 15 minutes for the system to stabilize and then you're going to measure it at this point and then if you don't have the proper amount of subcooling you're going to add some more refrigerant and it as you add refrigerant incrementally it starts to move the point where the refrigerant backs up in the condensing coil until you've added enough refrigerant where it moves back to where it was designed to be so that you will have 10 degrees of subcooling now just like the superheat method of charging when you add the first few increments of refrigerant you're, you're not going to see a huge amount of change in the subcooling levels or temperatures and pressures it's it, it it seems to be at the beginning of when you're charging a system that you'll add this refrigerant and the char the changes are small very smaller that you, you can't even see but if you continue to do so and as you approach the proper subcooling level it seems that you get to that tipping point again and it's it's very easy to um, have added refrigerant five times and then you go well I'm not seeing much change and I'm gonna add a whole lot more refrigerant than I have been 
and if you're very close to this tipping point you're going to overshoot this and overcharge the system and then you're back into this recover reclaim and recharge the system so incrementally you must do this so when you have a system that is metered using a TXV a low system charge results in low or zero no subcooling and just remember that's because when you don't have as much refrigerant in the system as you should you don't have that traffic jam that backup of refrigerant into the condensing coil so that it can reach its proper subcooling level all right so our next video we're going to talk about a TXV metered system that is in an overcharged condition.